The girl in the white dress approached him and asked quietly, I know the general manager of Lang Yum Corporation and Bandao Hotel is named Lin K. I think it's you, right? Lin Ki immediately turned his head away, raised two fingers and replied, take a guess. The girl in the white dress with an admiring expression placed her hand on her chin and kept gazing at Lin Ki while praising him. No wonder he could be so arrogant to challenge others. It turns out to be that way. That morning at the rival company's office, Lin Wai Kang entered the workspace and asked Gu Expo, the buzz about handsome mask is heating up, isn't it? He smiled and replied, anyone watching a short video app must know about this by now. Moreover, I have prepared quite a few people. When the live stream starts, they will bad public opinion. The effect will definitely be good, just rest assured. Lai Wai Kang walked over, patted Gu Expo on the shoulder and said, great, with your words, I feel assured. The girl with green hair sitting on the nearby sofa while putting on makeup smugly said, my goods also have a significant advantage. The stuff from a handsome mask over there isn't cheap and is priced higher than usual. It can't compare to ours. Lai Wai Kang clenched his fists, joyful, exclaimed, I'm even more confident now. A handsome mask was so cocky in front of me before today. I will show him the power of capitalist. One hour before the live stream at Lin Ki's hotel, he was deeply focused on his work when someone approached him gently and asked, Are you hungry? Have you eaten? Turning around, he saw Jai King Ren, Tian Nian, and He Yun Yuan walking over together. He exclaimed, You all are here too. Jai King Ren got closer to Lin Ki, wrapping her arm around him affectionately, and said, This is your first time live streaming to sell, so we definitely had to come to cheer you on. Lin Ki took her hand and replied, You guys find a spot first. We have to live stream soon. I can't take care of you all at the same time. Let's talk after the live stream. Jai King Ren turned and walked outside, saying over her shoulder, Just keep working. We're just here to watch. Jang CLU curiously asked Lin Ki, Brother Lin is that beautiful girl in the mask your girlfriend? Lin Ki smiled and responded, She hasn't shown her face. How do you know she's beautiful? Jang CLU replied confidently, She may not show her face, but just by her figure, I can guess with 99% certainty that she is a fairy descending to earth. The girl in the white dress noticed they were engrossed in conversation and reminded them, Don't chat anymore. Be serious. We're about to live stream. She turned around and shouted, All departments, pay attention. Take your positions. Then she waved her hand and said, Prepare. Five, four, three, two, one. Start. The live stream session begins. Jang CLU cheerfully greeted the audience. Hello, everyone. Today is our first time live streaming to sell products. Lin Ki also said, this time we are live streaming for the purpose of a charity agricultural market, so the profits will go to the farmers. Jai King Ren sat outside proudly praising, everyone, look at Lin Ki's performance isn't a very professional, unlike the hosts from many European and American TV channels. He Yun Yuan wiped the sweat and reminded her, sister, pay attention to your image. Are you trying to praise your own kind? Tian Nan crossed her arms and said impatiently, I think Lin Ki is indeed overdoing it. As long as he reveals his true identity, a crowd of people will gather to buy all this stuff. Jan King Ren replied, There is something truly different about him compared to us. If he calls on other companies to buy his goods, then the meaning of the experience would be lost. In a hotel room, Ban Dao was live streaming, and Jang Xiao Yu happily held a jar of peaches. Now I would like to introduce our first product, which is fresh yellow peaches from Xuan Hong Town. We personally selected them and sent them to the processing factory directly. They are different from other frozen yellow peaches and I will open a jar for everyone. In the chat channel of the live stream, some people commented, Batman, I heard this streamer is very ugly, which is why he wears a mask and doesn't dare to show his face. Is that true? Ugly men, get out. Who would watch a live stream from someone so ugly? Lai Lin angrily called for the administrator. Get those leading public opinion out of the live stream. The administrator looked back at Lai Lin. Boss Lady Lai, we have kicked them out, but there are too many of them and we couldn't get rid of all of them. Lylin was angry. Tan it. It must be the other platform's competitors that came here. He even even looked at Jai King Ren, who was wearing a white mask with concern. The boss not showing his face has allowed the competitors to find his weakness. Jai King Ren, wearing a white mask, looked at his phone with discomfort. At first, she thought he just wanted to play around a bit. Who knew he would become a top streamer? These people are so annoying. What does his appearance have to do with what he's selling? He even even sighed, there's no way around it. In this day and age, you have to consider appearance before anything else. Tian Nian turned to look at Jai King Ren, who was wearing a white mask along with He Yun Yuan. I feel there's no need to worry too much. Every time Boss Lin takes action, it's very precise. 
such trivial issues won't be a problem for him. Jang Xiao Yu held a jar of golden peaches with some worry. Ling Qi, wearing a black mask, said seriously, I'm glad that everyone is paying so much attention to my personal issues, but in reality, those things have nothing to do with today's live stream. You think I'm ugly, which means you believe you are more beautiful than me, but it really doesn't matter much. Ling Qi, wearing a black mask, pulled a car key from his pocket and held it up. This is my car key. The value of this car is $3 billion. I bet those behind the screen who are cursing me will never be able to afford it in their lifetime. Lin Qi wore a black mask, pointed the camera at Jai King Ren, who wore a white mask and continued speaking. This beautiful girl is my girlfriend. So everything you always dream of, I have it all. So is my appearance really that important, whether it's good or bad? Jai King Ren was a bit surprised. Lin Qi, wearing a black mask, looked seriously into the camera. So you all leave public opinion, don't waste your energy anymore. Just do what you need to do. In the chat of the live stream, someone commented, Handsome Mask really is a master, digging straight into other people's pain. Ha ha ha, daring to challenge Handsome Mask. What rank you have to compete? King of Flowers. Even if you sell everything you have, you still can't afford a tire of Handsome Mask. Just get lost, we're not foolish enough to listen to you. Lai Lin looked at Lin Qi in the black mask, trying the golden peach jar product, and admired his quick reactiveness. Tian Nian next to Jai King Ren in a white mask happily said, Look, what did I tell you? Brother Lin always keeps taking action and isn't this turning danger into safety? Jai King Ren, wearing a white mask, worriedly replied, But I feel like this is only temporary. The people doing this are mostly professionals. Perhaps in a little while, they will make a big fuss about this. After all, people do this for a living. As long as there is money, anything can be done. He Yuan next to her said seriously and angrily, That's right. Those people are indeed a bit shameless. Lin Qi, wearing a black mask, was still tasting the product, while Zhang Xiaoyu was introducing the product. A pack of canned golden peaches, six jars per pack for $30, nearly $200 total. On the chat channel of the live stream, someone commented, Wonder Woman, is that all? Is there anything else included? Small fish, this is a bit expensive. Canned goods on the other platform are only $20, and they even include a bag of dried fruit. John Wick, that price is unacceptable. Although I enjoy Handsome Mask live stream, it's hard to accept such a high price. He even Yuan turned to look at Tian Nian. CEO Tian, it's your turn now. Tian Nian happily and seriously replied, I feel like nothing has really changed much. Tian Nian stepped forward to the live stream and said cheerfully, I am Tian Nian, the vice president of Diggy Group. I am here to provide benefits for everyone. Each person who successfully places an order will receive a DD taxi discount voucher. I hope everyone supports Handsome Mask live stream. The sales performance displayed on the system board decreased. Lylan looked a bit serious. Take out all the other products. Don't focus on just one thing. Bring out the other products. No need to keep holding on to one item like this. Jang Yu, cheerfully holding a bag, said, Next, I would like to introduce to everyone, this is the second product, rice from the Northeast region. Jang Yu happily took a spoonful of rice. As you can see, the color of this rice definitely differs from what you buy at the market. A 10 kilogram bag is priced at $30. Lai Lin seriously looked at the data board and thought the sales figures compared to what he imagined are still very different. A person stepped forward and placed the statistics on the table in front of him. Lin Qi, wearing a black mask, glanced at the data and seriously thought, if it keeps declining like this, isn't this live stream going to be a complete failure? At the Four Quarters Hotel, the blue haired girl cheerfully introduced the products. Boss Lai, holding a cigarette, watched the girl selling. How are the sales numbers? Gu Expo, happily looking at Boss Lai, said, With these beautiful girls here, our sales have soared. Gu Expo cheerfully yet seriously looked at Boss Lai. The handsome mass products have stopped selling. They are bound to fail miserably. The stock we have will spoil. Boss Lai seriously lit his cigarette. What we need is that effect. Tell a public relations team to keep it up, make a fuss about his appearance, and hit hard on that point. Gu Expo looked worriedly at Boss Lai. Isn't it too little to only target that aspect? His products are priced higher than ours. We could also make a fuss about that. Boss Lai, with a cigarette in his mouth, said seriously, what I really want to do is not to ruin his live stream this time, but to make him completely fail miserably in the live stream sales business, thus leaving this social platform altogether. Boss Lai was serious. In an era where people rely on their looks to make a living, making a fuss about his attractiveness could completely take him down. This is one of the methods for uprooting the problem. Zhang Xiaoyu spoke with a worried tone. This consumption level is somewhat different from his. Lai Lin suddenly received a call. The phone rang several times. She hesitated, 
feeling a bit apprehensive. As soon as she picked up the phone, the person on the other end began to angrily lecture her. What on earth is going on? Not only are you failing to sell the items in stock, but you're also causing trouble. What exactly are you planning to do? Lai Lin calmly replied, Boss, this batch of goods is the responsibility of Handsome Mask. Even if they don't sell, he will buy them all. The person on the other end continued to rant for a while longer before abruptly hanging up. Even if there are no economic losses, the app's numbers will drop. You all better figure it out. Lai Lin gently rubbed her tired head. The situation is already very tense. What are we going to do? The numbers are still declining. Meanwhile, Jiang King Ren turned to ask He Yunyuan. The girl live streaming with Lin Qi is named Zhang Xiao Yu, right? Do you have her contact information? Jiang King Ren continued. I'll message her telling the boss to take off the mask. I can't bear it any longer this way. People believe whatever they are told. If we don't take the real goods out, they will think he is truly ugly. He Yun Yuan quickly replied. Okay, I'll tell her. She then pulled out a three-eyed apple and sent the message to Zhang Xiao Yu. The message was sent to Zhang Xiao Yu. She read the message and quickly responded to He Yun Yuan. Understanding the situation, Zhang Xiao Yu slammed the table, stood up, and shouted. The higher people guiding public opinion keep talking about Handsome Mask's looks. Today, I will show everyone the real face of Handsome Mask. Saying is doing, Zhang Xiao Yu immediately reached out and pulled off Lin Qi's black mask. As soon as they saw Lin Qi's face, the girls had to say if they were smitten like bananas. Oh my god, Handsome Mask is so good looking. Lai Lin also had to blush. Why hide such good looks behind a mask? Jiang Yu took the opportunity to explain. I told you Lin wears a mask for live streaming because his looks are too dazzling, afraid it'll make you all feel insecure. On the live stream, countless viewers began to interact with comments. From the account, her moonlight. I'm a man and I feel jealous. Truly divine beauty. Handsome mask, do you still need fish in your fish tank? Such fair skin and a beautiful face. Bye, bye to support handsome mask. J. King Ren could only feel helpless before the rapid changes of social media. These people flip so fast. A staff member reviewed the statistics and reported. Boss Lady lied, the order volume has increased over 1,000 orders in just one minute. These female fans are really something. Lai Lin felt the burden had been lifted and brightened up. This is a good thing. A staff member rushed in and before seeing anyone, they heard. Boss, there's trouble. Lai Wai Kang, casually enjoying himself, was annoyed. Why the panic? The staff member was panting as if being chased by a dog. The handsome mask has revealed his face. The employee's face looked very serious. Not only is it not bad, but he is extremely handsome. He's even better looking than some movie stars in the entertainment industry. Google Expo still didn't believe it and asked again. Is it really true? Show me. The employee hurriedly presented the tablet. Sir, take a look. Lai Wai Kang and Google Expo were stunned. They never expected the true appearance of handsome masks to be like this. Lai Wai Kang immediately asked, What's the consumption rate there now? The employee honestly replied, The sales are crazy. I just estimated, and they are selling more than a thousand orders per second, much faster than Ms. Zhou. Lai Wai Kang slumped into his chair. Everything around him seemed to collapse. Gu Expo held his head, not expecting this outcome. The employee cautiously continued, Boss, I have some bad news. Upon hearing the employee's words, Lai Wai Kang turned pale. The group of people we hired to humiliate Handsome Mask has now turned back to Ms. Zhou's live room and said they wanted to return the goods. The situation is not looking good. Lai Wai Kang raised his hand to support his face, gritting his teeth and growling. How could this happen? The live stream ended. Jiang Xiao Yu excitedly said goodbye to everyone. Thank you all. That's it for today's live stream. As soon as the live stream was turned off, Jiang Xiao Yu eagerly said to Lin Qi, I can't believe in just two short hours we sold over two million orders. Not a single item left. We are so good. Lin Qi stretched to relieve himself. Honestly, I'm lucky. Sitting for over three hours is really unbearable for anyone. Jiang Xiao Yu pouted in salt. I sat for over three hours too. Lin Qi responded, incredibly good job. You are Jiang Xiao Yu. You are truly a genius, a fairy descended to earth. Jiang Xiao Yu hinted to Lin Qi with a sulky tone. Lin, our live today was a huge success. We should celebrate a bit tonight, right? Lai Lin briefly summarized today's profit. Lin, just now we calculated backstage and the sales reached nearly $3 billion with a profit of over $900,000. Suddenly, the system notification sound rang out. System reminder, mission completed. Lei Wai appeared. Congratulations, Master Lin Qi, for completing the live stream sales mission. 
receiving the first prize in wilderness survival and earning 200,000 mature points. Ling Ki took Ling Wai's hand with one hand and hugged her waist with the other, resembling a couple deeply in love. That's amazing. Earlier, Xiao Yan mentioned that program. It is indeed wilderness survival, just what we need. System, you really know how to care. Lila noticed Ling Ki's strange behavior, his head full of question marks, and called out to him, Boss Lin. Ling Ki snapped back to reality, scratching his head and smiling awkwardly. Then, turning to Zhang Xiao Yu, he said, You handle the rest, just take the extra money. Upon hearing about the money, Zhang Xiao Yu shyly blushed and playfully said, Lin, don't be like that. The more comfortable you are, the more I feel like your sugar baby. Ling Ki pinched Zhang Xiao Yu's cheek to remind her to wake up. Stop dreaming. Only now did Ling Ki turn to Jai King Ren and say, Have you been here with me for so long? Aren't you tired? Let's find a place to eat a little celebration. Jai King Ren chuckled lightly. If I had known earlier, I would have told you to take off your mask sooner. He Yu Mi Wan joined in. I feel the same. The three of them went outside. The phone rang. Kin Han immediately asked Lin Ki, How you finished the live stream? Did I and Lying buy you over a million marinated peaches? Lin Ki happily replied, Ha ha, the live stream is done. I'm getting ready to find a place to eat. Where are you two? Kin Han answered, In a capital, we also booked a Vlai Piru. Just waiting for you to come and celebrate with some drinks. Hearing this, Lin Ki told Jai King Ren to get ready. Let's go to the capital to celebrate. It's on me. Later in the capital, everyone was present for the celebration. Each person's chair was so luxurious that it looked like it could accommodate four or five people at once. The table was filled with extravagant and lavish dishes. Everyone started to toast each other. Ha ha, I toast you with a drink. Linky read a message on his phone and felt a little anxious. Neither early nor late, just in time, likes to hand message Lin Ki. Can you come to my house for a bit? Lin Ki immediately replied, wait for me. Then, like many other fickle men, Lin Ki got up and told Jai King Ren, I have something to take care of. Jai King Ren felt that leaving at this moment was somewhat impolite, so he stopped Lin Ki. Is it urgent? This is your celebration party. Leaving now wouldn't be very appropriate, right? Lin Ki said seriously, showing that she was determined to leave. She normally wouldn't contact you. If she has texted you, it definitely means something very important. Seeing this, Jai King Ren pulled He Yun Yuan along, that you should go. He Yun Yuan and I should leave too. It's getting late. Jai King Ren smiled warmly, bidding farewell to everyone. We have some matters to attend to, so we'll be leaving now. Sorry for spoiling the mood. Qin Han quickly remedied the situation. Sister-in-law, why say such things? We are just having fun. Work is more important. We can meet again another time. Everyone urged Lin Ki. You go to your work. We'll gather again another day. Lin Ki took a taxi to where Lai Su Han was sitting in a street corner. Lin Ki got out of the car and asked Lai Su Han, What are you doing here? Lin Ki gently inquired, showing concern for Lai Su Han. It's late already. Why aren't you going home? Did your dad and little brother come to cause trouble again? Lai Su Han pouted, trying not to cry. No, she explained. I feel like someone has been coming to my house. Lin Ki then asked seriously. Huh, someone broke into your house? Lai Su Han explained the reason she thought so. Nothing is missing, but I feel like someone has touched my things. I noticed something was off in the house yesterday. Lai Su Han stated seriously. So in the morning before going out, I marked the door. When I came back just now, I found that the mark had been disturbed. Lin Ki calmly asked, Are you sure you didn't lose anything? Lai Su Han replied firmly, I didn't lose anything. Lin Ki stood up, looking seriously towards Lai Su Han's apartment. Then Lin Ki decided to go and see what was going on. Let's go check it out. Night had fallen and Lin Ki assessed the outside. The door lock shows no signs of being tampered with. Besides you, does anyone else have a key to your house? Lai Su Han did not hide anything. Xiao Xin has a key too. She is usually alone and sometimes comes to my house to study, so I had an extra key made for her. Lin Ki tried to key in the lock. Let's go in and take a look. Lin Ki was as professional as a detective, questioning thoroughly. What do you feel has been disturbed inside? It's not any underwear, is it? Lai Su Han immediately denied. No. Then she opened the study door. But my study has been rummaged through the most. It feels like all the documents and papers have been turned over as if nothing was taken. Lin Ki then told Lai Su Han, Let's go, show me. Lai Su Han readily agreed without hesitation and closed the door. As soon as Lin Ki entered, he got straight to the point. What has been rummaged through here? Lai Su Han replied, My essays as well as my lab reports and my computer. The mouse position has been moved. Upon hearing this, Lin Ki sat down at Lai Su Han's desk and opened her computer to check if there was anything important. Lai Su Han was somewhat serious. 
There are six estates at risk of copyright theft. Linky pondered for a moment and then reminded her, this is a small matter, just be careful. If someone publishes an essay on a similar topic as yours, let me know right away, I'll help you deal with it. Lai Suhan took a glass of water and walked over to Lin Qi saying, I find this situation very strange. Even a thief wouldn't dare to break into someone's private home like this. It's just a few essays. Lin Qi held a glass of orange juice and said, it is indeed very strange. The fact that someone could sneak into your house is enough to make that person formidable. Then Lai Suhan sat down in a chair and asked, what should we do now? Lin Qi placed the glass of orange juice on the table and said, what can we do? Just go to sleep. He smiled at Lai Suhan and said, if you don't sleep, the sun will rise. Then the two kissed each other, looking very happy. Lin Qi began kissing downwards, laughing and saying, relax, that's how we can have fun. He gradually touched Lai Suhan's body. She joyfully closed her eyes and said, not here, take me to the room. Then Lin Qi picked Lai Suhan up, making her laugh joyfully. The next morning, Lin Qi woke up to find Lai Suhan gone. In the kitchen, the smell of food filled the air. Lai Suhan, cheerfully cooking, asked, You're awake. Did I wake you up? I'll be quieter. Lin Qi laughed, hugging Lai Suhan's waist and said, It smells so good. I'm hungry too. Then he asked, Is Kao Xin working today? Lai Suhan, who was frying eggs, said, She worked the night shift yesterday, so she probably has a day off today. Lin Qi embraced Lai Suhan, looking at her and said, that's good. Later you can call her and tell her to come over. An hour later in some room, Chao Xin walked in with a smile. Lai Suhan cheerfully asked, Were you busy with the night shift last night? Chao Xin smiled and said, It was okay. But working all night made me really sleepy. Chao Xin walked to the dining table and saw a lot of food prepared. She asked, Lin, why did you remember me today? Is something going on? Lin Qi replied, Just come and eat. Director Lai's cooking is really good in addition to his surgical skills. Lin Qi asked, actually, I want to ask you something. Recently, when you've gone home, have you noticed anyone following you or any strangers in your house? Kyao Xin was eating and smiled. Wow, this sausage smells so good and tastes great. Lin Qi looked at her happily and thought, even if someone is really following her, this silly girl probably wouldn't know. Lin Qi asked, did you bring Lai Su Han's house key? Kyao Xin, still chewing her food, replied, of course, what exactly happened? Lai Su Han said, these past few days, I've felt something is off in the house. It seems like someone might have broken in. Kyao Xin said, When I came in earlier, I saw a camera downstairs. This housing area must have a surveillance system, right? Lin Qi slapped his hand on the table and said casually, That's right. Let's go to the management office and check the cameras. In the room, the three of them were chatting. Where is the management office? Let's go check it out. I'll take you to the management office. The receptionist looked at the three and said, Good morning. Lin Qi said, Hello, I would like to find the manager here. The receptionist asked, What seems to be the issue? Lin Qi replied, I want to view the camera footage. The receptionist inquired, Camera? What happened? Lai Su Han said, I suspect someone has broken into the house. I want to find out if there has been anyone suspicious nearby recently. The attendant looked at Lin Qi and Lai Su Han and said, Please wait a moment, I will call the manager. The door opened and a middle-aged man stepped out and asked, What's the matter? Lin Qi said, Hello, it seems our house has been broken into. I want to check the surveillance system. He looked confused and replied, Are you sure someone has broken in? You can't just say things like that. Lin Qi responded, Aren't I suspicious? That's why I want to check the surveillance camera to confirm. The man, looking angry, picked up the intercom and said to Lin Qi, If you really have a request in this regard, you should go to the police station to file a report. Then they will send someone here, and only then can I let you see the camera. Chao Xin said, How troublesome. We just want to take a quick look. She added, We are doctors at Huashan Hospital, and we are all decent people. We definitely have a reason to want to see the surveillance camera. How could we do anything wrong? He replied, I have no other choice. This is our working regulation. Lin Qi smiled and said, People have to follow the rules at work. We have no right to criticize them. He looked at something Lin Qi was holding and remarked, Buddy, this is... Lin Qi put his arm around the man's shoulder and asked with a smile, could you help us out a bit? Then the door of a room opened. He walked into a room with many computers. He entered along with three others and said, Theoretically, what I'm doing is wrong, but since the people in the building need it, we should agree. Which floor is it on? I can help you to see. Lai Suhan pointed and said, Building 14, third floor. He was worried and after finishing speaking, he smiled wryly and pointed to the broken screen, saying, The camera in building 14 happened to be broken. It seems like it went down four days ago. 
Link Keith thought this was not simple at all. Otherwise, it wouldn't be such a coincidence. He laughed and returned the envelope, saying, This can't help everyone then. You can take this back. Link Keith said, No need. It's not worth much anyway. He smiled and reached out just beside Lai Su Han, saying, My friend lives in this area, so if anything happens in the future, just keep an eye out for him. At Lai Su Han's house, Lin Ki said, Although coming back was pointless, at least it proved that your thoughts were correct. Chao Sin imagined Conan. Brother Lin, what exactly happened? I've been watching Conan for many years, and my reasoning skills are quite good. Lin Ki was eating fruit and said, Starting from the day before yesterday, someone secretly went to Director Lai's house, but no valuable items were lost. What was touched were the research documents on the computer. Chao Sin smiled and asked, Are you interested in the research results of Director Lai? Lin Ki replied, This is possible, but the doors and windows are all closed, and there are no signs of forced entry. In other words, the person who entered her house must have used the key. He frowned and asked her, Do you understand what I'm saying? Chao Xin unexpectedly said, Hey, Lin, you aren't suspecting me, are you? It's not me, it's not me. Lin Ki said, If I suspected you, I wouldn't be telling you all this now. Chao Xin asked, Director Lai, has the key always been with you? It must always be like a pair never separating, right? Lai Xu Han said, Of course, I said, In my bag, my phone and key are both in my handbag. Suddenly, Lai Xu Han's eyes widened. Lin Ki asked, why did you stop talking? Do you remember something? Lai Xu Han said, Exactly the day I went shopping to try on a dress. Suddenly, a few beautiful girls surrounded me and talked for more than 10 minutes. At that time, my bag was still in the fitting room. I rushed in to check and the bag was still there with hardly anything in it, so I didn't pay much attention. She thought about when she was taking things out of her handbag. Chao Xin said, I feel like something must have happened then. Someone must have copied Director Lai's key. Lai Xu Han asked, how can a key be copied? Lin Ki asked. Are you really unaware of this? Lin Ki chuckled and said, There is a substance similar to clay. You just need to press the two sides of the key into it and then apply force. It will copy the shape of the key and then you can make a duplicate. Chao Sin pushed her glasses up and asked, The head of the cardiology department is famous nationally and someone broke into her house, but nothing was stolen. Is this a distorted personality or a degradation of morals? Lin Ki kicked Chao Xin's chair, making her exclaim, Ah, Lin, why did you kick me? Lin Ki laughed and said, Stop rambling, just give me the conclusion. Chao Xin replied, The conclusion is that I feel the other party is targeting Director Lai. She is just being influenced. Suddenly the phone rang. Sun Fu answered and said, Director Lin, we're having a bit of a problem here. It seems someone has hacked our computer. Lin Ki, surprised, asked on the phone, The computer has been hacked. Everyone wait for me at the research office. I'm coming over now. Chao Xin asked, Lin, has your computer been hacked? Lin Ki took off his shoes and said, not mine. Lin Ki turned back, looking slightly annoyed and said, it's the research office's computer that has been hacked. Chao Xin said, Lin, now I can be sure that the person secretly targeting is actually you. Director Lai is just affected. Lin Ki was about to open the office door and said, you stay here, but during this time, don't stay at home. I'll book you two rooms at the Bandao Hotel. Stay there for a while. He smiled and said, I'm sorry for both of you, you'll have to endure a bit. Chao Xin and Lai Su Han laughed and said, That's fine, we understand, Director Lin. At the Long Axai Research Institute, Sun Fu smiled and looked at Lin Qi saying, Director Lin, you're here. Lin Qi glanced at Sun Fu's computer and said, Show me the confidential data. Sun Fu sat down at the computer and said, Sure, you can take a look, it's all here. He pointed at the computer screen and said, This code is very strange. I've tried to copy it several times, but it resembles document scanning codes. However, our firewall blocked it, so nothing happened. Lin Ki smiled and raised his finger. You handled it well. This period is quite special. Please pay attention to issues related to this matter. Now, I will go to Shen Tianzuo first to see how things are. In Shen Tianzuo's laboratory, Lin Ki opened the door and walked in a bit frustrated, saying, Mr. Shen, please check if the security system of the Research Institute has been breached. Shen Tianzuo was looking at the computer and said, It seems everything is fine. Lin Ki asked, Everything is fine. Are you sure? He replied, I checked thoroughly. It should be fine. Lin Ki sighed in relief. If it's fine, then that's good. Shen Tianzuo brought water and asked, Why are you in such a hurry? What happened? There can't be many people daring to do these things to you in the country, right? Lin Ki took the cup of water and said, I'm not sure either, but I'm certain I've attracted someone's attention. Recently, regarding security issues, please keep an eye on it for me. 
if anything happens. All our efforts will be in vain. Shen Ti and Zuo smiled and said, I know about this. You can rest assured, these small matters are not an issue. Lin Qi said, Then I'll head out first, Mr. Shen. If you need money, just let you know. He smiled. I'm fine for now. You just focus on your work. Shen Ti and Zuo asked, Right, if the other party is well prepared, will your company conduct a thorough check? Lin Qi replied, That makes sense. I'll go back and double check. At Zhu Zhaoji, Lin Qi opened his computer, looked at the screen and said, It really did get infected with a virus like the research office. He pressed the delete button on the computer and a message appeared prompting him to activate the protection program. Then he crossed his legs and leaned back in his chair, thinking that all of this must have been caused by the Ve Financial Group. At the Sangala Hotel, Fahar asked, How's the progress going? Have you found out anything yet? The bald man replied, No one is around Lin Qi. He's very clean. We couldn't find any information. He continued, We tried to hack into the company's computer system twice, but both times we failed. Their security system is very solid and the level is quite high. Even professional hackers are at a loss. Fahara held a glass of wine and said, They are researching chips, which isn't too related to national research, but Lin Qi's computer might contain something important. The bald man said, We have sent someone to prepare for the trip to Jiu Zhao Ji to bring some things back. Fahara drank wine and said, Ah, try to be careful. Also, you need to pay attention to a person named Lai Xu Han. I feel that her involvement is part of Lin Qi's researching guo. The bald man replied, Yes. He continued, By the way, Mr. Va, there's another person. Liang Ru Yu has a very close relationship with Lin Qi. Should we investigate her? Bahara answered, Liang Ru Yu cannot be touched. This woman is not simple. Her mother has stepped back, but she can still cause severe harm to my family. So we must not touch her. It's too dangerous. The bald man replied, Yes, understood. At Villa Number 9, Ju Zhao Ji, Lin Qi jumped down from the rooftop with great skill and gradually entered the enormous and luxurious villa. The door slowly opened. Lin Qi sat in the chair thinking, I've always been at villa number one, rarely going to other places. They should not be on guard. On the fifth day, Lin Qi was sitting at the computer, looking at the screen and saw a person sneaking in through the window. A voice echoed, the study of villa number one. Lin Qi looked at the computer and said, I've been waiting here for a few days and finally I got you. I hope you can get the job done. One person was sitting in front of the computer while the one standing by the window looked at the clock and said, five minutes left, hurry up. A person wearing a mask was typing on the computer and said, I'll be done in three minutes. He suddenly widened his eyes, stared at the screen and shouted to his accomplices, move fast. One accomplice left through the window. Then a foot kicked him in the face, causing him to widen his eyes in surprise. One of his subordinates fell back, while another glanced at his companion and another person was standing in front of the two of them. Lin Qi asked, I'm here now, do you still want to run? A masked guy said, how did you find us here? Lin Qi replied, from the moment you opened my computer, your identities were exposed, but you're quite skilled, managing to sneak into my house without anyone knowing. One person pulled out a prepared knife, and two others also took out knives. One person said, if we've been found out, then we should be clear. We're leaving now, and we hope you won't do anything too extreme. We promise we won't come back here again. Lin Qi snorted. Are you still trying to resist? He grabbed the hand of a person holding a knife and kicked him hard in the stomach. Another person was punched in the face by Lin Qi. Lin Qi stood there and asked, Who sent you guys here? Have you found out anything from me and my friend yet? One person lying on the ground gasped for breath and said, I can't say. Even if you call the police, it won't do any good. Lin Qi replied, just by looking at your faces, it's clear you haven't found out anything. Then he reached for a sharp blade and smiled, saying, Have you ever heard of dismemberment in legends? The two thieves were terrified, trembling, their faces sweating, and they said in unison, You, you are a monster. Lin Qi chuckled softly. According to the customs of Hlaxia, you should call me Hades. Now think carefully, I will count down. Five, four, three, two, one. One person, trembling in fear, said, don't please, I'll talk, I'll tell you everything. We were sent by Vahara. His goal is to find your research materials, but we never intended to harm anyone around you. You must know that. Lin Qi twirled the blade and asked, Vahara, his position in the Va family must not be as high as his sister's, right? So the mastermind behind this is Vadana, correct? The person responded in panic. Not at all, it's not what you think. The relationship between Vadana and Vahara has nothing to do with this. This is something Vahara did on his own. Lin Qi asked, where is Vahara now? He scratched his head in confusion and said, I'm not sure about that. The person who assigned us the task is Song Jian. 
We only communicated over the phone, so I don't know where Vahara is. Ling Ki pointed a knife at his face coldly and said, Then what are you waiting for? Call him now, I want to see Vahara. Don't waste my time. He hurriedly said in fear. Yes, yes, I'll call right away. Then he picked up the phone, trembling as he dialed the number and said, Let's meet at Shi Shui Dock in 30 minutes. Lin Qi struck him hard on the back of his neck, causing his eyes to roll back and he fainted. After dealing with these two, Lin Qi said, Someone will take care of you shortly. At Shi Shui Dock, the bald man asked, Have you been tracking us for a long time? Lin Qi calmly replied, I've known for a long time. I've been waiting for days, just waiting for you to take the bait. The people you sent to my house have already been taken care of. Now I'm here to pick you up. The bald man asked coldly, Are you planning to fight me? Lin Qi crossed his arms and answered calmly, As long as you tell me where Vahara is, I will let you go. The bald man said, Song Jian, I am not afraid of death. Your threats are useless against me. Then you rush forward. This place is remote. Only one person will leave alive. The bald man stood in front of Lin Qi and said, if you hand over all your research results, I might let you go. He kicked Lin Qi in the face, but Lin Qi quickly dodged and blocked his kick with his hand. The bald man frowned. Interesting. You're stronger than I thought. I didn't expect you could take down my two subordinates. I really underestimated you. He angrily threw another punch. Lin Qi swiftly dodged and lunged forward, slapping the bald man hard, causing his glasses to fly off. The bald man cried out in pain. Ah! Blood spurted from his mouth, and then he fell to the ground. The bald man gasped. Do whatever you want. I am not afraid of death. Linky cleaned his ear and looked at him calmly, saying, I know this is all orchestrated by Vahara, and he did it behind Vedana's back. Linky smiled and said, If I tell Vedana about this, she will take care of it. The bald man, with blood still oozing from his mouth, suddenly asked, You? Linky said nothing, grabbed his hand, and twisted it hard, causing him pain. He continued to smile and said, Oh, I have you under my control now. This isn't over. I need to play with you for a while longer. Let's see how long you can endure. The bald guy breathlessly said, Don't you know a bit about ethics? Shameless person. Lin Qi asked, You must have family members, right? If I say a word to Vedana, how long do you think they can hold out? The bald guy shouted, Don't you dare touch my family. I'm warning you. Lin Qi calmly replied, Vahara is at Sangala Hotel, room 2404, right? At that moment, the phone rang. It was Kao Xin calling, she asked. Lin, did Director Lai come to see you? Lin Qi replied, Aren't you two at the hotel? What happened? Chao Xin answered worriedly. Just now she received a phone call and her expression suddenly changed before she went outside. I can't reach her anymore. Lin Qi said, Don't worry, I will go look for her. Then he turned and kicked the bald guy hard, asking, Did you guys take Lai Su Han? The bald guy only let out an, Ah, and replied, Ah, before I got here, she was taken to the hotel. Lin Qi hurried to Sangala Hotel. In the room, Lai Su Han and Vahara were sitting across from each other. Vahara smiled and said, Director Lai, have some tea. This is our specialty tea, very rare in Huaxia. Lai Su Han folded her arms and coldly replied, I'm not interested in tea. I just want to know why you came to my home. I hope you can give me a reasonable explanation. Vahara poured tea calmly and said, Because you are Lin Qi's colleague, we are concerned about his research results. You must know a bit about it, and we hope you can cooperate. Lai Su Han replied, The research on Chinese medicine by Lin Qi was done entirely by him. I had no part in it. You have the wrong person. Vahara smiled. Director Lai has misunderstood. We are not interested in Chinese medicine research. He continued, We are focused on biological purification techniques. I hope you can cooperate. Lai Su Han asked in surprise, Biological purification techniques? Sorry, I don't know anything about this. You have the wrong person. She stood up intending to leave, but was stopped by two bodyguards. She asked, don't you want to let me go? The Hara calmly replied, It's still early. Director Lai can take her time to think. There is food and drink here. I will give you enough time. At that moment, someone arrived, causing the two bodyguards to turn back in surprise. Lin Qi appeared, looking angrily at them. Vahara was also taken aback. Lin Qi. Lin Qi said calmly to Lai Su Han, Don't be afraid. I will take you home soon. Vahara annoyedly said, Stop her. Vahara was a bit angry. I'm just telling you, okay? Lin Qi coldly put his hands in his pockets. Do you think I need to care about you and my capabilities in Zhonghai? He kicked the chair, sending it straight into Vahara's face, causing him to fall backward. Vahara angrily said, I'm just too lazy to hit you back, not because I'm scared of you. He ordered the bodyguards, but Lin Qi lunged forward, knocking one bodyguard down. He could only cry out in pain. Two other bodyguards rushed in, and one of them was holding a stick. 
but Lin Ki quickly kicked one guy in the face and the other was kicked in the stomach. Lai Su Han walked out of the room and witnessed the scene of a series of bodyguards being taken down by Lin Ki, lying scattered on the floor. Fahara, in panic with a hint of fear, said, I really just want your research documents. I mean, no harm. Lin Ki looked at him with cold eyes. Fahara, terrified, knelt down and confessed, I admit it. I promise I'll ensure that I won't get involved in this matter anymore. Please let me go. Lin Ki asked, Let you go. He kicked Vahara hard. Just then a voice rang out, Mr. Lin, please calm down. Vahara kicked to the ground, coughed up blood and said, We really didn't intend to kidnap her. We just happened to run into her. Cough, cough. Lin Ki stomped down on Vahara's leg, causing him to scream in pain. Ah, ah, ah. Lin Ki coldly said, I don't have time to listen to your explanation. He was about to raise his foot to kick again when someone stepped forward and a voice called out, Stop! The newcomer was Vonda, accompanied by two bodyguards. She said, Mr. Lin, this was my oversight. I hope you can give me face and give my brother a chance. Vahara quickly exclaimed, Sister, you are here. Hurry and save me. Vaina looked at Lin Ki and said, Mr. Lin, please, for my sake, spare my brother this time. Lin Ki said, Fine, since you've spoken up, I'll give you some face. He continued, no matter what, you have invested in us. This $3 billion should still be left for you. Then Lin Ki stepped hard on Vahara's foot, causing him to scream in pain. Ah, oh shit. Vandana said, Lin, what are you doing? Lin Ki calmly replied, I need to let you vent my anger first before giving you face. Now it's fine, my anger has subsided. The rest, you can handle yourself. After all, this kid has already messed up my big plans. Lin Ki turned to Lai Su Han and said with a smile, Chu Han, let's go. Lai Xu Han responded, Yes. A bodyguard asked Vandana, Miss, should we just let him go like that? Vandana sighed. If not, then what? Can you stop him? Bahira looked at Vandana pleadingly. Sister, you must take revenge for me. Vandana, pale and a bit scared, said, I already told you not to get involved in this. Bahira muttered, I, I just want to quickly finish the mission and help you. Vandana gently stroked his chin and said, you are indeed a good little brother. After so many years, you still care for me. Vahara smiled awkwardly. I am your brother, so of course I have to take care of you. That's just what I should do. Vandana said with a smile. Don't rush. I have a way to help you stop the pain. If there's a next life, remember to listen to me. Right after that, Vandana pulled out a gun and pointed it directly at Vahara's forehead. He was startled, tears streaming down his face. Vandana walked away, coldly telling the bodyguard, Be careful while handling this. Clean up the blood. The bodyguard replied, Yes. Vahara was shot right in the forehead. In the lavish room, blood was splattered everywhere, and two people were cleaning up. It turned out Vahara had been killed by his own sister. His body was being carried away by two others for easier handling under the direction of a man in a black suit. Perhaps he was a close associate of the one who had killed him. About an hour later, the man in the black suit reported to a woman who was preparing to light a cigarette. Miss, everything has been taken care of, leaving no traces behind. Vandana showed no signs of pain or sadness. She simply calculated and calmly ordered, send an invitation tomorrow. Say that my brother Vahara has unfortunately passed away. Invite him to the funeral. The man coldly suggested, Miss, if we reveal this to the family, it could be blamed on Lin Ki. We can take advantage of that. Vandana turned around to hold the cigarette, closed her eyes, and furrowed her brows tightly, making her look somewhat uncomfortable. Then she said to the man, if the family finds out about this, it is likely to provoke Lin Ki. But my plan is not yet complete, and my brother does not bring any benefit to the family at all. Therefore, I don't care about his life or death. It turned out that her brother's death was not a big deal in Vandana's eyes, as he was just a useless person to the family. Meanwhile, in a modern building named Bandao Hotel, in a room, Su Han and Lin Ki, a man and a woman, were pressed against each other against the wooden door. Su Han wrapped her arms around Lin Ki's back and hugged him her arms moving up to embrace his neck. Lin Ki also naturally wrapped his arms around the girl in front of him, looking at her with deep affection to comfort her. Don't be afraid, I'm here. Then they both fell onto the soft bed while still maintaining that alluring position. The girl's cheeks were slightly flush, perhaps because she was feeling shy. Their eyes were tightly shut as if they wanted to maximize their sense of touch to enjoy the passionate kiss that was about to come. Lin Ki gently comforted Chu Han, apologizing to her for what had happened earlier. It's my fault for being late, leaving you to think too much and feel wronged about it. That night, clothes were scattered on the cold ground, but for the two of them, perhaps the warmth in each touch served as a catalyst to help them reach the heights of emotional ecstasy. The next morning, Two Hands slept soundly, 
possibly due to exhaustion. Linky dressed and prepared to leave for somewhere. He returned to the bed, leaned down close to her ear and whispered, You have been tired these days, sleep a bit longer. Linky turned to leave, but still felt uneasy and glanced back at the girl lying on the bed. In the hotel dining room, Lin Ki looked for something to satisfy his hungry stomach. While enjoying his meal, a young man dressed neatly approached him and politely greeted. Boss Lin, what a coincidence. The young man continued, I have finished the arrangements you asked for. We have contacted over 20 high-end headquarters in Zhonghai these past few days. They are all very pleased to cooperate with us. Upon hearing this, Lin Ki expressed satisfaction with the speed of the work completion. He happily said, that was quick. Sit down. The young man sat down to continue the conversation with Lin Ki, expressing his honor to work with him. The tasks assigned by Boss Lin, I will definitely complete as soon as possible. The joy on his face was unmistakable. Lin Ki casually picked up his food and advised, you should take the opportunity to expand your scale. The most important thing is influence. Just then, the ringing of a phone cut into the conversation. The call was from a young woman with shoulder-length hair, her voice excited as she announced, I told you before about the Wilderness Survival Program. Registration has begun now. There's a contract and a commitment letter that require your personal signature. If you have time, you can come by my place. Lin Ki immediately dropped his cheerful demeanor, replacing it with seriousness towards work. He glanced at his watch and replied, Okay, I will head over there now. I should arrive in about half an hour. After that, Lin Ki left the hotel and headed to the television station where Xiao Yan worked. The building was very tall, with modern architecture and glass facades reflecting the development of the area. Upon arrival, Lin Ki casually slipped his hands into his pockets, observing the bustling crowd in front of him in astonishment. I never expected this program to attract so many participants. At that moment, a beautiful girl stepped out. She was the one who had just called to arrange the meeting with him. Although she was wearing a simple office outfit, her confidence and stunning figure made her the object of admiration for many. A middle-aged man with long hair looking somewhat romantic excitedly spoke to the person next to him. Chen, the rumors are true. The director of this program is indeed a beauty. Chen Dongzai, the principal of the training school in Zhonghai, standing next to him, agreed. She is indeed beautiful. Later, when we register, I'll try to flirt a bit. I might win her over. Outside, Xiao Yan smiled and greeted Lin Qi. Lin, you've arrived. The middle-aged man noticed Xiao Yan chatting happily with Lin Qi and immediately showed signs of worry. Principal Chen, don't you see? Soon after, the man approached the female director while Principal Chen visibly showed his displeasure at seeing her so close to someone else. It seemed their relationship was quite intimate, regardless of the scrutinizing gazes around them. Out there, the two continued their conversation. Xiao Yan said to Lin Qi, Come on, I'll take you to the main lobby. Lin Qi politely responded, Thank you. The female director of the Wild Survival Program led him into a room where many people in charge of different segments were waiting for everyone to register. Jiang Su, the person in charge of the program, looked surprised and asked, Xiao Yan, who is this? Xiao Yan cheerfully explained, This is Lin Qi. His skills are very good. I specially invited him here. Lin Qi smiled friendly at Jiang Su. But perhaps Jiang Su did not agree with Xiao Yan's approach, as he thought that looking at Lin Qi's physique, this activity seemed somewhat unsuitable. However, Xiao Yan did not back down and remained firm in her decision. Let's not discuss this issue right now. I have made my decision. She continued. You take care of the situation here. I'm going to get the contract. Ignoring Jiang Su's astonishment and irritation at how Xiao Yan made decisions without considering Lin Qi's appearance, she led him to the registration area and handed him a stack of papers. Lin Qi focused intently on reading while Xiao Yan urged him. Come on, I'll take you to sign, and I'll also remind you of some important things to keep in mind. But unfortunately, things did not go as she wanted, as Chen Dongzai had appeared from nowhere. He said, Wait! Both Xiao Yan and Lin Qi were surprised. Lin Qi was discussing the contract with Xiao Yan when Chen Dongzai approached. Xiao Yan spoke up. Is there something wrong with this player? Chen Dongzai was extremely angry, gritting his teeth as he replied. This event allows only those who pass the inspection to sign the contract. How can he take the contract without undergoing the inspection? Chen Dongzhai pointed angrily at Lin Kei. Xiao Yan explained, This is a special guest for this event. He is on the participant list and is exempt from inspection, signing the contract directly. Chen Dongzhai was still dissatisfied after hearing this, angrily pointing at himself. If there are such regulations, why am I not qualified to be invited? Upon hearing this, Xiao Yan was extremely angry, pointing at Chen Dongzhai loudly. The reason you didn't receive an invitation is definitely because of your inadequate abilities. 
Are you still standing there asking? Xiao Yan's words made Chen Dong's eyes face turn gray, looking pitiful. But he was still not satisfied, adopting a posture like a stranded crab. Then I want to know what the criteria are to be invited. Xiao Yan replied, now calmer. It is physical quality. We have confirmed that those invited have no issues, which is why we sent the invitations. Chen Dong Zai, upon hearing this, felt like he had just heard a joke, pointing at Lin Qi. Look at his figure. Do you think he looks like someone who can pass the physical test? The wilderness survival game doesn't require good looks and those without abilities. Just then, a pair of legs appeared, catching the attention of all three. A voice rang out, halting the argument. All right, all right, everyone quiet down. It turned out to be Zhang Su. He walked over, raising an eyebrow and offering a solution. Whether someone has strength or not, we can test it. Xiao Lian, seeing Zhang Su appear, was not very happy, thinking to himself, what is Zhang Su intervening for? At that moment, a muscular guy stepped forward, cracking his knuckles and said, you said it, I will give it a try too. Seeing that guy, the atmosphere seemed to become livelier. A blonde guy spoke up. He is also qualified to be invited. If I defeat him, does that mean I get to skip the exam, right? Another person chimed in. I ought to try to. Xiao Yan saw this. A dark line appeared on her forehead. She didn't want to say anything more. Then she suddenly spoke up. Fine. She raised a finger, her eyes glancing toward Lin Qi, who was still standing firmly on one side without saying a word. Then she declared, as long as you're more skilled than him, you can qualify. As soon as she finished speaking, a foot rushed forward to attack. It turned out to be a bald guy lunging at Lin Qi like a predator pouncing on its prey. He confidently shouted, Ha ha, I'm going first. But unexpectedly, Lin Qi swiftly dodged his punch, then rewarded the guy with a slap that made him spit out the water in his mouth. Lin Qi sneered, Stupid. The people around saw the big bald guy crash to the floor and were in an uproar. What's happening? Isn't the one who fell the skinny young man? Seeing the scene before them, the person beside was extremely startled and said to Chen Dong Zhai, Brother Chen, this kid must have some martial arts training. Chen Dong Zhai looked at the scene as if struck by lightning, gritting his teeth in anger, then replied to the other person, It's just hitting the acupoint. Otherwise, how could it be like this? On this side, another confident guy stepped up. It's my turn now. But perhaps he was too excited. Lin Qi merely sidestepped, leaving him unable to react. Xiao Yan, standing behind, watched and closed his eyes in frustration. Why do these people insist on seeking trouble? Seeing the situation, Zhang Su broke into a sweat and spoke up. Our chosen player does have strength. If you can't handle it, don't rush in. At that moment, Xiao Yan stepped forward. Let's go, we shouldn't waste time here. Hearing her, Lin Qi smiled and nodded in agreement. After saying that, the two walked past Zhang Su. In front of him, Lin Qi stopped, smiled, and casually asked, Do you want to give it a try? To see if I'm qualified? Upon hearing this, Jiang Su's face turned completely serious, and he hurriedly shook his head and waved his hands, laughing nervously. No, there's no need. Seeing his reaction, Lin Qi stopped joking and walked alongside Xiao Yan, saying, Let's go. Then, the two entered the room. Their appearance immediately attracted the attention of a cute pink-haired girl, Lai Jia Lei. She quickly approached, pointing and exclaiming to her sister. Sis, look at that man. He's so handsome. It seems like he received an invitation too. At that moment, Lei Jianmi, an outdoor blogger, responded to the girl. Perhaps it's the wilderness survival expert, unlike us. Lei Jianle became even more excited at this, not noticing that her sister was feeling very awkward. She said, Isn't that just perfect? This aspect is your weakness. If we can team up with him, we can go further. Just then, the sound of footsteps appeared. Huang Yunhang, another outdoor blogger, approached and sat down on a chair, responding to her earlier words. Jia Lei, you are taking this too seriously. With your and Jia Ni's abilities, you basically don't need any help from others. The three of them looked in the same direction, resembling a strong team. He continued, as long as you collaborate with your sister Jia Ni, aiming for first place won't be a big problem. After settling into position, Lin Qi asked Xiao Yan, are these people invited as well? She turned to reply, Surprise, many segments have related footage. Don't underestimate them. These people are very capable. Some are wilderness survival experts and quite famous in the entertainment industry. Overall, it's not simple. Hearing this, Lin Qi smiled and exclaimed, Isn't this program of yours just a real-life game? Yet it seems quite formal. He asked further, Has the location been found? Xiao Yan, after listening, ran her fingers through her hair and said with her beautiful face, Several TV stations have contacted for the organization, the location is a deserted island in the sea with harsh conditions, so you should be mentally prepared. 
Link Key, while reading the contract, wondered, Are really doing this? Is it dangerous? Xiao Yan reassured him, Don't worry, we have plenty of safety measures. As long as you don't try to do anything reckless, you'll be fine. Take a look at the contract. If there are no issues, just sign it. The prize section of the contract stated, First prize is $5 million, second prize is $3 million, and third prize is $1 million. Shortly after, Lin Qi's name was on the contract. After signing, he asked Xiao Yan, There shouldn't be anything else, right? She held the contract and smiled, replying, There is nothing else from the player's side. Suddenly, she shyly covered her mouth and promised him, I'll indulge you however you want when you win first prize. Hearing this, Lin Qi leaned in closer to her and whispered in her ear, Someone like you really has a unique charm, very straightforward and direct. Outside the building, Lin Qi looked at the long line of people and thought, that's a lot of people signing up. Suddenly, a voice called from behind. Hey, handsome, wait up. Lin Qi turned around and saw Lai Jiale smiling, her eyes tightly shut as she walked towards him. She asked, Are you also an invited guest of the game show? Lin Qi looked at her with a judging gaze, thinking to himself, With a weak body like hers, even if her skills are good, it would be hard for her to make it to the end. As if sensing his gaze, she introduced herself. I'm not the one participating. It's my sister. Li Jiani. Standing behind her, spoke up to greet him. Hello, I am a participant in this game show. Li Jiani stepped forward, expressing her desire to collaborate. I want to team up with you. Unexpectedly, Lin Qi flatly refused. No need. Li Jiani's face darkened and she exclaimed, What? In surprise. Then came the sound of the car door slamming shut. Li Jiani stood there watching the car drive away, leaving the two sisters behind. Jiani was still in shock. Did he really just turn us down? Jiolel was incredibly excited. That was so cool. Li Jianyi, angry at being rejected, had a sullen expression. I'm not someone who can't find a team. A moment later at Ju Zhaoji, Lin Qi had just arrived on his motorcycle and a person was waiting for him. He held a package in his hand. Mr. Lin, there's an express delivery. Lin Qi didn't get out of the car. He just quickly thanked the person and opened the package. The contents left him in shock. Hello, Mr. Lin, my brother unfortunately fell into the water and passed away on October 10th. The burial will take place at 10 a.m. He was 27 years old. The funeral will be held on the weekend morning, hoping friends and family can attend. After reading it, he fell into deep thought. Vadana is indeed more ruthless than I imagined. It seems she won't give up her intentions. He silently thought, I need to make the most of my time to successfully test the new technique, fearing that it might be too late. Just at that moment, he received a phone call. As soon as he picked it up, the person on the other end hurriedly informed him, Mr. Lin, there's been a problem. They are accusing us of disrupting the market. The complaint has already been sent. He was taken aback. What? Then the car accelerated, speeding down the road. The voice in the car continued discussing the lawsuit. Don't panic. The company's projects are still developing normally. Don't worry about this. The other side responded. Should we deal with this at all? Lin Qi's tone became sharp, his expression extremely serious. This is not a normal commercial lawsuit. There are people behind the scenes playing tricks. I'll handle it myself. A little while later at the Long As I Research Institute, Lin Qi had regained his composure. He walked over cheerfully and greeted. Hello, Mr. Shen. Mr. Shen, upon seeing him come in, turned and asked, You are here? Yes, uncle, Lin Qi replied. I heard that an er accused you of something and I'm a bit worried, he said. An er is, after all, a leading enterprise in the tech industry and if this news spreads, it could impact the company. Lin Qi sat down in a chair, adopting a very relaxed posture and replied, I know about this, but it doesn't affect me much. While Lin Qi was reading the documents, Mr. Shen spoke up. It seems the first battle in science and technology is happening at your place then. Lin Qi did not respond, but lowered his eyes and asked, Do you know why I'm here today? Hearing that, he hurriedly asked, Is there something important? Lin Qi suddenly became very serious. His gaze darkened as he placed a USB on the table and said, Take a look at this, uncle. He put the USB on the table and continued, This is the 3.0 chip technology. It may not be the most advanced in the world, but at least it's a few months ahead of an er. Shen Tianzuo picked it up to examine, unable to suppress his admiration. Your boy is indeed a genius. When you mentioned you could create a 4 nanometer photoplasma, was it based on this? Lin Qi quickly responded. That's right. There have been quite a few things happening lately. Otherwise, I would have finished it a long time ago. However, our research institute is still not able to use something this advanced. If we give this to the other side, what do you think an er will do? Shen Tianzuo happily spoke up. Anner is going to blow up. He quickly plugged the USB into the computer, looked at the screen thoughtfully, and said, This thing can at least reduce an ER's market share by three points. 
and it can help our teammates launch a comprehensive counterattack in terms of technology and operations. Lin Kay, standing behind, did not hesitate to praise. Mr. Shen has a good eye. I think the same. Since starting this business, I haven't encountered a battle as interesting as this one. I can't wait any longer. Shen TM Zuo happily replied, Uncle thinks that in terms of technology, this title of Mr. Shen, I'm about to be unable to handle it anymore. Lin Ki humbly said, Don't, 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 I've always been the big boss of the industry. Please help me check if this is okay. Shen Tian Zuo was very willing. That's no problem, you keep busy, I'll take care of it. At that moment, Lin Ki's phone suddenly rang. He quickly answered, Hello? On the other end, a voice quickly responded, Boss Lin, I received a call from an error. Their people wanted me us to talk at 6 p.m. tonight at the Sun Yu Villa. After hearing the location, Lin Ki pondered for a moment. The scene quickly shifted to the Sun Yu Villa. On the table were delicious dishes along with glasses of wine. At this time, two figures were sitting there having dinner. A girl in a black dress raised her glass of wine and spoke. Why aren't you saying anything? She was Anthe Alist, the daughter of the CEO of an Ur. Zhao Wen quickly replied, The things that should be said have already been said. Later, whatever everyone talks about, I will not participate in. Moreover, when you are talking, there is no need to call me. Just let me eat my meal in peace. Andy Alist immediately teased. Really? Why are you so scared of that man? Is he a demon or something? Zhao Wen, a little frightened, said. Last time, with the case involving the six major pharmaceutical companies, I interacted with him. He is not a demon, but even scarier than a demon. But Andy Alice responded very calmly. He is indeed very dangerous, but it's just because you are careless. I have already made good preparations. In the field of medicine, he may have exceptional talent, but we are in the technical field and they have no means to threaten us. The initiative is still in my hands. Dao Wen thought to herself, Why do I have such a foolish schoolmate? I just hope Lin Qi doesn't get angry and take it out on me. At that moment, footsteps were heard. Andy Alice quickly reacted. He is here. Before long, Lin Qi's figure appeared right in front of them. He saw Zhao Wen and seemed a bit surprised, then asked, Why are you here? Do you two know each other? Zhao Wen hurriedly explained, We are just classmates. She came to Shanghai, so I accompany her. Andy Alice promptly stepped forward and politely extended her hand. Hello, Mr. Lin. However, Lin Qi did not respond but sat straight down in the chair, ignoring her and spoke, Let's eat. I've been busy outside all afternoon and I'm a bit hungry. Andy Alice felt a little embarrassed, and after a moment, she presented the menu. Mr. Lin, please choose your dish. However, Lin Qi didn't look at it and told the waiter, one portion of each dish on the menu. Hearing this, Andy Alice was a bit taken aback, but quickly agreed. Okay, as you wish, Mr. Lin. Not long after, an array of sumptuous dishes was laid out on the table. Lin Qi immediately dove into the food as if he hadn't eaten in years. Andy Alice couldn't help but ask, Mr. Lin, don't you have anything you want to say? At that moment, Lin Qi, still chewing vigorously, suddenly recalled, Right, 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 I just remembered. However, his words left both Zhao Wen and Andy Alice feeling powerless. Lin Qi continued, Thank you for the meal, but I need to eat first. Andy Alice, unwilling to give up, spoke up again, That's not what I meant. I think we should discuss business regarding the lawsuit against Long Tsai for disrupting the market. I can withdraw the lawsuit, but I hope to obtain shares in Long Tsai. Lin Qi took a bite of meat and after a moment scoffed and said, do you people use your brains to eat? You can actually make such a request. Andy Alice replied without hesitation. I think this would be beneficial for both companies. An error is a large corporation in the industry with an even larger scale, and an error has many businesses under its umbrella. Mr. Lin should consider this. Lin Qi suddenly stood up. I know that an error is skilled, but your opponents are not to be underestimated. The gap between us is evident even to the naked eye, but don't think that you can sit firmly on the throne forever. He took out a USB and said, this is enough to kick you off the throne. Andy Alice quickly reached out to take it, and she immediately plugged the USB into the computer. The documents instantly appeared on the screen. Everyone gathered to watch. Andy Alice quickly clicked through what images of numerous provocatively dressed girls appeared, accompanied by sounds that made listeners blush. Andy Alice looked on helplessly. Lin Ki immediately pulled the USB back. Aha, sorry, I grabbed the wrong USB. He quickly took out another one and said, this one is the right one. Really, believe me. At that moment, the computer displayed lines of code. Lin Qi spoke up. This is the code for the 3.0 chip. Moreover, we have registered the copyright. As for the other things, I won't elaborate further. What do you think would happen if I sold this to your rivals? Andy Alice was a bit taken aback and replied, 3.0 code, we've been researching for over two years and haven't even developed 3.0 chip technology. How can you do it? 
Lin Ki cavalierly replied, Do you think I can't do anything besides brag? Andy Alice hesitated and asked, Is this really something you researched? Lin Ki replied without hesitation, Does it really matter? All you need to know is that what you are seeing is the 3.0 chip technology. Zhao Wen thought to himself, this could be called a weapon of destruction. Once he sells this to the other side, the landscape of the global chip market will change, leading to a tremendous of hevel. Andy Alice closed her laptop and said, Mr. Lin, you are indeed a standard businessman. But with Long Xi's current level, you know very well that even with this technology, Long Xi won't be able to use it. I hope you can hand over this project to us. Lin Qi immediately declined, but I'm not sure of money. Andy Alice unexpectedly asked, What do you want then? Lin Qi stated his condition. I want shares in the lithography company. She became angry and said loudly, Absolutely not. We are two separate companies and cannot make any exchanges with you. Seeing this, Lin Qi withdrew his USB and said without hesitation, If not, then forget it. We can talk another time. I have an appointment with someone on the other side to see if they have a solution. Andy Alice quickly intervened, Mr. Lin, you can't do this. But Lin Qi didn't care. You should understand, it took you more than two years to produce this, while well, I only need three months. If not in half a year, I guarantee your product will be inferior to theirs by a whole generation. Before leaving, he said goodbye. Goodbye. Zhao Wen quickly said, Do you believe me now? Someone like Lin Qi is not to be trifled with. And the Alice somewhat dazedly admitted, I underestimated him. I didn't expect him to be so intriguing, but he can't intimidate me. Zhao Wen asked in surprise, Is that really the case? Andy Alice confidently replied, I just copied his data. But when she opened her computer, the notification that appeared shocked Andy Alice. Impossible. This is my personal computer. It has no internet connection. How could this happen? Zhao Wen came over and patted Andy Alice on the shoulder to comfort her. Maybe when you first inserted the USB, your computer got a virus. Also, the contents of your computer may have been accessed by him. Hearing this, Andy Alice was bewildered. The computer reported that it could not find the documents the data had been deleted. She thought to herself, I lost all the documents. Andy Alice could not comprehend and shouted, How could this be? At this time, the streets were fully decorated for Christmas and the atmosphere was very lively. Lin Qi walked alone on the street, thinking to himself, Christmas is approaching, it seems I should prepare some gifts. 